I just want to preface this video really quick. This is a repost. This is purely because YouTube decided to delete my methylamine video. There was no warning and they immediately removed it from YouTube. And the reason for it was sale of regulated goods. Now methylamine is not controlled, nor is it a drug, so I don't really know what they were thinking. They also said it had no context of being EDSA, and that's basically like educational, documentary, scientific stuff. Now the synthesis of a useful reagent apparently is not scientific enough for them. So I basically said fuck it, and I'm just gonna repost the video. And because they thought I was doing some sale of controlled regulated goods, I made this silly little synthesis shirt if you want to pick one up. Link in the description. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. Jesse, we have to cook. Whenever you hear the word methylamine, you generally think of one thing. Who's that Pokemon? It's Clefairy! It's meth. What? Not only does the DEA and FBI love it, but chemists also love it as it's useful in a lot of reactions. A common one that you'll see is the formation of imines with aldehydes and ketones. This can be quite useful in a lot of syntheses. What we're going to do today is reduce the nitromethane with tin and hydrochloric acid. To start, I added a stir bar into a 500 milliliter flat bottom flask. I then put a glass funnel at the top so I could pour the nitromethane in a lot easier. I added 16.4 grams of nitromethane that I made from my previous video. Like I said before, we're going to be using tin as our metal source. The reason I went with tin is this procedure only calls for about an hour of refluxing, whereas the iron would take about 14 hours. I didn't have to add anything slowly, and I just dumped all the tin in there. I also did the wizardly swirl of the flask, just to make sure all the tin was spread evenly. I turned on stirring, but it really didn't do too much. Luckily tin won't stick to the stir bar, and I can set up for a reflux. I then had to slowly pour in some muriatic acid in 10-15 to 15 milliliter increments. The procedure mentions that this can get out of hand, and it has to be done in these increments. The entire time that I was pouring it in, it never frothed or went out of hand, and I could actually just pour it in pretty fast. The reaction mixture did get warm, and the tin did start to dull and turn darker, but it really didn't do anything. With the addition of the acid, it made it a lot easier for the stir bar to work. If the reaction mixture decided to get out of hand, all I needed to do was put the flask in an ice bath. As more and more acid was added, the reaction mixture actually got quite hot, and it actually started refluxing by itself. The solution also turned yellow, and it was looking a little bit more opaque. This was really cool to me, as I never got to do this reaction in my class, and it was really cool to see it in person. Even the tin was starting to disappear, and I knew the reaction was working. With one of the last increments, you can see that the reaction mixture is a dark yellow now. I also turned on the stirring to a very high setting, just so everything can be mixed around. It's now time for me to turn on heating, and I'm just going to bring it up to a constant reflux. As the solution was heating up, the reaction mixture actually turned a little bit orange, and eventually it turned almost red. The reaction mechanism for this isn't really well defined, but there is a possible explanation for what's happening. When I started researching on how the mechanism worked, I had a couple reactions. <laughs> okay, it's got a little kick. Now, obviously, this mechanism isn't 100% certainty, but it does bring up some pretty cool reactions. It starts with tin doting an electron pair, and then essentially it just builds its own leaving group with the acidic solution. Tin chloride is also ejected, and then tin donates an electron pair to the nitrosyl group. It essentially goes through this a couple times, with a couple reactions, and we end up with our amine. What's really interesting is maybe after around 30 minutes, you can see that the flask is coated in this powder. I expected this to be tin chloride, but I could be wrong. Near the end of the reaction, you can see that the solution mixture became very opaque and orange. We also have a ton of tin that didn't react and is kind of stuck on the side of the flask. This worried me a little bit since it didn't react, but I decided to go on.
The next thing I had to do was put this in an ice bath and let it cool down. I need to make sure that the reaction mixture is as cold as possible as our next reactant will heat the solution up a little bit. I used a sodium hydroxide solution and I slowly poured it in. I also had the solution in the freezer for about 30 minutes. As I poured the sodium hydroxide solution in, you can see tin hydroxide precipitate out of solution. Right now, methylamine exists as its conjugate acid, which is the methyl ammonium ion. We need this as methylamine so we can proceed on with the procedure. Once the solution is basic, we're essentially going to get methylamine as a gas as we heat it up. This way, we can just bubble the gas into a solution of hydrochloric acid and get our methylamine HCl. At times, I had to put the solution into an ice bath as the sodium hydroxide solution was heating it up. If it started bubbling or frothing due to the heat, I would lose some of my product. What's interesting was when I first started pouring, you can see this thick vapor come out of it. The solution also turned a light yellow and very opaque. I also wanted to check to make sure I actually made methylamine and I decided to smell it. <clears throat> yeah! It smelled as what I imagined a hot STD smelled like after doing eight lines of cocaine and breathing in a candle flame. It really wasn't enjoyable. I then got ready to bubble my methylamine gas into hydrochloric acid. I used a vacuum control valve with a tube leading out of it. The tube is connected to an inverted funnel and it's lowered into the hydrochloric acid solution. After everything was set up, I turned on the heating and I only put it up a little bit. As I was heating up the solution, we can see this really cool white gas inside of there. I'm not really sure what it is, and if someone knows, put it down in the comments. The procedure called for a distillation setup, but I was just going to be boiling the methylamine out of it anyway. It does say to distill the reaction contents carefully to first liberate the first 40% constant boiling solution and then the gas itself. Though, then the procedure says that we're just going to be bubbling the distillation vapor into the hydrochloric acid. So I just said I'm going to use that valve instead and just make it easier for myself. As the methylamine gas comes over, we can see that there's a slight reaction between the hydrochloric acid and the methylamine. Okay, I'll be real with you, I actually don't know if that's the actual reaction, but I'm just going to gaslight myself to think it is. When the temperature started going up, it really started producing a lot of vapor and or reaction. Every so often, it would fart out a cloud of vapors and it was pretty cool to see. After a while, I looked down and the sodium hydroxide was reacting with the leftover tin. I was hoping this didn't affect anything in the entire process. So if my yield is low, then I blame it on this. As I saw water travel up the valve, I knew that I had to be close to being done with the entire thing. There was still a heavy amount of vapor production and I just decided to leave it a little bit longer. Since I didn't exactly know what the vapor was, I just wanted to play it safe. When I didn't see any more vapors being produced from the beaker, I decided that the reaction was complete. This is what the beaker looked like at the end, and there's a lot of byproducts in there. All I had to do now was just boil off the hydrochloric acid in water. I decided to boil it off outside, as I'm not that stupid and I won't do it inside. Once I boiled off the water and hydrochloric acid, it actually looked like a thick oil at the bottom, and when I took it off, it solidified. I didn't get it on camera, but it was pretty cool. And this is what it looked like inside the beaker. It's this beautiful white crystalline powder, and it's pretty hygroscopic. Funny how such a beautiful compound is used in meth manufacturing, which kills a lot of people worldwide. I ended up with a yield of 4.9 grams, and a percent yield of 27.01. I should have definitely got a higher yield, and I'm not really sure where I went wrong. I think it had to do sometime around when I had to boil the methylamine into the hydrochloric acid solution. If anyone knows exactly where I went wrong, please comment down below and I'll make sure to read it. This is what the reaction flask looked like once I let it settle. There's a lot of byproducts and unreacted tin that's inside there. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it as I have no need for it, though I heard there's a chemistry teacher with stage 4 lung cancer that could be in use of it. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and also another huge shout out to all my Patreons.